Hi everyone, Peter Carlos here again. Today I want to talk to you about the actor-director relationship. This is the pivotal relationship on the set. It masters everything. Everyone is busy working, running around art department, light department for that one moment when the director yells action and the actor does what they're meant to do. First of all, I want you all to understand, I'm not just sprouting this information. I've been on amazing sets uh, when I was in LA. I remember I was on the set of Gilbert Grape. I was on a film called Mistress with Barry Primus, who had amazing cast in it. Uh, I've been on Heat, 15 Minutes, The Score, a shitload more. Point is, I've seen some amazing actors direct some, being directed by some amazing uh, directors. I want you all to understand one thing. No one is above the script. Once you accept that, you understand that egos don't belong on a film set. It's not a director saying, I want it done my way. Does that make sense for the script? Stal Adler was brilliant at this. No one is above the script. The script gives us the circumstances and the characters are in play. So if your opinion, either as a director or an actor, don't make sense for the script, they're not supported by the vision of the script, then they stick out like a sore thumb. And as badly as you might want to put them in there, it doesn't fit. So you as an actor, if you have ideas, it's not about you as a peacock, I've said this before, it's about does it make sense for the character? And if you as a director have visions or you listen to an actor with an idea, your job is to go, does that fit the script? And if it does, let's try it to see what we come up with. A very good uh, director once said to me, unfortunately, he said, in America, they direct and they look for the process. In Australia, he said, unfortunately, they direct with a result in mind. Don't go in on a film set with a result in mind. Find the result. You don't know what you'll find because you've got two amazing people and a whole crew of people and we're in that moment and magic could happen in that moment. If you walk in as a director and said, I want this done, I want the actor to do it, the line exactly like this, then you've lost all the magic. There's potentially no room for anything to happen, spontaneous or otherwise. You're gonna lose these magic moments that we've all talked about in the past, like Brando and the glove, and all these amazing moments. In the moment trumps everything. Having said that, it's gotta make sense for the script, okay? Now, here's what I mean by the script. There's a song called uh, Father and Son by Cat Stevens. The words are this, we all know them. It's not time to make a change, just relax, take it easy. You're still young, that's your fault. There's so much you have to go through. That's the script of the father. And the son responds with, how can I try to explain every time I talk, he walks away or something like that, it goes on. Point is, that's the script. Now, I as a director have the right to say my vision is leaning towards the, the direction of the father. So I'm not changing the script, the script is exactly the same, but my vision is to show more of the father's perspective. A different director might choose to lean in this way. Their vision, exactly the same script, but their vision is to lean in from the father's perspective. You've got completely two different films with the exact same script based on the vision of the director. I, as a parent and as a son, I've lived both. And depending on the day, I can fight for both of them quite strongly and quite passionately. The point is this, if you as a director express that vision, not just to the actor, to the art department, to the cameraman, to the whole crew, they then understand your vision and they will set decorate the place slightly differently. Right? It's not about saying, I want it done exactly this way. Why do you hire these people to begin with? Let them do their work. That's when it comes down to hire well, hire capable actors, hire actors that have visions and opinions. Don't tell actors how to do things. There's some great footage and I'll find it put on there. There's one, it's called How to Piss Off Robert De Niro in 15 Minutes, where the director tells him what to do. I'm sorry, I got, uh, that's energetic. You don't know, you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. Priceless. There's another one with Marlon Brando. This was on the, on the set of The Score and Marlon was arguing with the director and he calls him a numbnut and De Niro was on the set and he says to him, hey man, you've got to get through this and he literally takes over directing because the director 
wasn't directing Marlon very well. Didn't give him any breathing room. We don't want too much breathing room, but we definitely want enough. There's another one with uh, William Shatner when the director tells him how to say the line. Um, can there be a little more uh, excitement in the beginning? <laughs> when you tell an actor how to say the line, you automatically pigeonhole them, and then the, the actor sitting there trying to mimic what you just said, all spontaneity has gone out the window, all impulse has gone out the window, and even if we get it right, all we're doing that moment is giving you one flavor. That's it. Where if you give us your vision and allow us to do our work, you'll come up with many different variables. Your job as director is how to cut it, how to film it, what lens to use, all that shit. And keep in mind, we as actors are in it. We need really strong directors and good directors because we're in it. I'm in the moment. I'm thinking of the person I'm talking to as a character. I'm talking to my father, my son, whatever. I'm actually emotionally and physically in it. You have the idea, but we're going through it. So our body's going through all these processes that bring us out of reality. So we need good directing. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, story with Al Pacino when they were shooting uh, Dog Day Afternoon, and he talks about they put uh, bed sheets everywhere so that he wasn't even aware of where the camera was. But when he's in it and the emotions have kicked in and all that, he needed the voice of the director. Sidney Lumet, to hear it, to be guided. We need that voice. And finally, we only need one voice. Your job as director is to make sure you tell the crew, don't talk to the actors about creative ideas. We don't want someone going, oh, I thought that was very good. And someone else from another department going, I really like that take. And I think you should do it this one. I should. That's confusion. We want one vision. That's what makes your director. We want one vision, one guidance. No one should talk to the actor about the artist, the creative side of stuff. No one. Just one opinion, one voice, and give us the breathing room to take it. That collaborative effort leaves room for spontaneity, leaves room for magic to happen. So neither of you, neither the director or the actor or the whole crew could have seen what might possibly happen in the moment. And that's what makes great filmmaking catching those rare moments that make sense for the script, us doing, you taping them, you've got magic. Take care, talk again soon.